John, 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 one second. I didn't, we didn't start yet. We didn't start yet. Like, sir, no, it was a, it was a, it was a, it's fine. I didn't introduce you or anything. That's all right. But that's all I'm doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, as our director just said, good evening. Welcome to People's Security Bank Theater at Lackawanna College. My name is Jim Cullen. I'm the director of this theater. Thank you all for coming to tonight's graduation. Let me hear that warm round of applause for the cadets. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hazelton Class 244 graduation, honor, integrity, and courage. Before we begin, I ask if you have a cell phone or any type of a device that has the potential to make sound, if you would please silence it for us, as I just did with mine. There is really no restrictions on photography. We just ask if you do it personally that you uh, just do it politely. We have our consummate photographer over there, the great Christopher Hughes, who will be taking a picture of the presenter and the cadet. Um, also, I want to mention that ECTV is back there, and each cadet will receive a copy of this graduation. Thank you, Mark McGlory. Also, thank you for abiding by our no food or drink policy. Give yourself a moment to make yourselves aware of the theater exits nearest you. And now it is my great pleasure, and let me hear that warm round of applause again, to introduce the director of the Lackawanna College Police Academy, John Chileri. Good evening. I was going to give you the housekeeping announcements, but I was uh, uh, told that's uh, something someone else wanted to do tonight. Uh, I want to welcome you here tonight. Uh, it's a really special occasion for uh, the cadets, uh, their family members, loved ones. It's very important in law enforcement that family and loved ones are there in support of their cadets. And I realized what a long journey it was for many of you to include the cadets and families. Thank you for your attendance and hope you enjoyed a special evening. To start our program off, I'd like to introduce the staff uh, from our academy, or as I like to call them, the academy family that makes it all happen. Uh, seated out there because they insist on not being recognized uh, is Diane Carey, one of our administrative assistants. Denise Boyle, one of our administrative assistants. I'm sure you've heard their names throughout the year, and they are the ones that make it all happen. Seated behind me on the stage is our assistant director of Academy Operations, Robert Jolly. Retired Chief of Police of, the, of Dallas Township. Our Academy Operations Coordinator. Uh, retired Captain Will Oliphant, retired from the Pennsylvania State Police. And the past Academy Director. I've been blessed with a team of dedicated individuals that do an incredible amount of the work to prepare the cadets for the challenges that they will face on the street. Our instructors are second to none. We have a cadre of best, the absolute best instructors representing federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. None of this would be possible if it wasn't for the dedication of these fine men and women who give up of so much of their time to bring us to this point today. Seated behind me are some very important people to our academy and to law enforcement in general. I'd like to introduce our honored guest seated on stage, Susan Muskowitz. She's the Vice President of Finance and Administration of Lackawanna College. Chief Robert Jolly, my academy Assistant Director, Lackawanna County District Attorney Mark Powell has joined us tonight. Retired Captain Will Oliphant, my Academy Operations Coordinator. Our guest speaker this evening, Al Walker, Chief of the Police of the Hanover Township Police Department. He is the 
uh, uh, first vice president of the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police Association. Our chaplain this evening is Dennis D'Augustine. He's a senior chaplain for the Scranton Police Department and will be doing our invocation tonight. Also joining us tonight is Scranton Police Department Detective Sergeant Mike Fiesco of the Scranton Police Department and a board member of the Never Forgotten Motorcycle Ride. And Patrolman Tony Gita of the Scranton Police Department, who is also a board member of the Never Forgotten Motorcycle Ride. Tonight's ceremony is being recorded and each cadet's going to receive a copy of the DVD. It was our gift to them to memorialize this special night. Our videographer is Mark Bigelore. And you've uh, already had met my friend, and he is here for all of our graduations, and I'm sure we put him through the, uh, uh, the ringer more than once over these graduations, Chris Hughes. And I can't thank him enough, as well as all of the staff of the theater this evening. Also with us tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, also with us tonight are representatives from the current cadet class, part-time class 243 and full-time Scranton class 245. They're here tonight to support their fellow cadets as they graduate. Cadets two, four, uh, of class 243 and 245 will now enter and take their seats. Please join me in welcoming the graduating class, 244, as they enter the theater. Ask all of our guests, please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Class Captain Carla Deeg, and the invocation by Chaplain Dennis D'Augustini.
to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as we will now have our invocation by Chaplain D'Agostini. Let us pray. Almighty God who rules over everything, please be with these cadets who are graduating from the police academy tonight, class number 244. Lord, I pray by name for Vladimir Benia, Carla Deeg, Lauren Fizz, Seth Gable, Gregory Hoffman, Isaac Jimenez, Greg Johnson Jr., Matthew Youngbar, An Lee, Patrick McDonald, Mitchell Muir, Ryan Poldnerk, Kyle Sobolski, Cody Searfoss, Christine Trager, and Lord, I pray for Jason Woodard. I pray for safety, that you, God, would take care of them, take care of their families, keep them, protect them, sustain them. In the tradition of the academy, Lord, we graduate their training and graduation to fallen officer, corporal, David William Whitmer of the Shemakin City Police Department, end of watch 11-13-83. I also pray for the cadets for strength, courage, resolve, integrity, honor, and character. And finally, Lord, I want to take a moment on behalf of these cadets to thank, thank you first and foremost for their journey and their family and to seriously entrust to you, whatever's next in their lives. Lord, thank you for being an amazing Savior. It's all for your honor and for your glory, and it's in your name we ask this. Amen. Yes, please be seated. Cadets will now undergo their final inspection as a class. The Academy is a paramilitary organization, just as police departments are. We require uniforms, conduct inspections, perform drill and ceremony activities, and we have a command structure. And the cadets wear their Class A uniforms this evening for their graduation as a sign of the ultimate respect for the profession that they are about to enter. The final inspection will be conducted by a member of the Lackawanna, Cor uh, Lackawanna College Board of Trustees, Dominic de Naples, who is a veteran of the United States Army and a member of the Lackawanna College Board of Trustees. He will be assisted by one of our instructors, Jeff Hughes. He's one of our valued academy instructors, and he is also a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Gentlemen.
Director Chileri, I now return to you, Class 244. This class is well and duly prepared. Drill Instructor Hughes, please take command of Class 244. Thank you, Drill Instructor Hughes and Mr. DeNaples. How about a round of applause for Class 244? <laughs> Without the continuous and dedicated support of the college administration and the Board of Trustees, this program, who has, what has been successful for 42 years, one of the longest running municipal police academies in the Commonwealth, none of this would be possible without the support. We're now going to hear from a representative of the Lackawanna College Board of Trustees, Mr. Dominic de Naples. He's going to share a few words directed to the graduating class. Thank you, Director. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for your attendance. My remarks tonight will be very brief. They will be general in nature and directed primarily to the 16 graduates. Lackawanna College has been educating and conferring degrees for a period spanning three centuries. We began way back in the 1800s, all through the 1900s, and well into the 2000s, and tonight, honor, distinction, and pride has come to visit us one more time. Tonight, the honors and the distinction rest with this class, 244. The pride, the pride as always, as always will remain here in the academy, and more especially with all of you, the families of the graduates, more especially because you were the people who helped with the tuition, the transportation, the babysitting, and you were also the people who gave them the encouragement, that little extra push to carry on and continue on when the road here may have gotten a little bit bumpy. And yes, folks, the road here is rather bumpy. The hill is steep and it's curvy. The way is very challenging and somewhat difficult. However, those graduates know this is, this is the small price that must be paid and the sacrifice that must be made in exchange for all of this, the bigger and better opportunity and privilege to be here today. Class, this certification, this diploma you received tonight does not come alone. It takes with it certain additional responsibilities on your part. All of a sudden, you're going to become a first responder. You're going to become somewhat of a role model. You're going to be looked up to by your friends, your neighbors, and your family, and more especially the youth and the children you come in contact with. The bar is now lifted on your personal behavior, and you must conduct yourselves accordingly. You must lead and you must teach by example. Class, you are well trained, you are well prepared, and you scrubbed up nice and clean and smartened up and shined up, and they look great tonight. Do they look good? 
I think they look great. However, the one remaining unanswered question is, how will they serve? How will they protect the dignity and the integrity of the badge of a police officer? How will they keep it clean, pristine, and free from tarnish and blemish? How will they serve? Class, how will you serve? I have that answer. During the final inspection tonight, I walk through the ranks, and in doing so, I visit each and every one of them. I look into the eyes and the faces of each and every one. And what am I looking at? I do not see doubt, confusion, or uncertainties. I see hope, promise, confidence. I see that eagerness and willingness to learn, to discover, and go forward in life. And life, as we all know, is one constant and continuous learning experience. A young mind, enriched, enlarged, expanded with all the values and virtue that this certification brings, can never shrink or return to its former size. Skill, talent, knowledge is no burden to carry. Now, when we separate and leave here tonight, you'll be crossing a threshold into a new era. Some of you have jobs to go to. Others will be seeking employment. You need to be the very, very best at whatever you endeavor into. Set your sights high. Point your arrows upwards, skywards, and do not be afraid to take that chance where the biggest loss will be taking no chance. Learn to apply the extra effort. Why extra effort? Because the ordinary effort does not always work. What is extra effort? Extra effort lies within. It's in your gut, it's in your mind, it's in your backbone. Extra effort is that eagerness and willingness to learn, to discover, and go forward, and the absolute refusal to quit or give up. Let's take a look at reality. Out in that real world today, it's the person who applies himself, the one who digs in, perseveres, and lasts the very longest. It is not always the brightest bulb that survives and becomes successful. All good things begin with a vision. You have some kind of a vision. Each and every one of you are loaded with incredible potential, unbelievable potential. What you need to do is reach inside of yourself, get a hold of it, shake it loose, and put it to work. The human body and the human mind will perform far, far beyond your expectations only if you challenge them. Class, do not underestimate yourselves. You can do it. Today, you will add to yourself one new dimension of character. You will add to yourselves an indelible mark of distinction that will remain with you. The certification, the diploma will bring to you the foundation, the building blocks, and all of the basic tools necessary for you to climb that ladder of success. And tonight, here at this level, you will graduate from the absolute finest and most challenging police academy in this commonwealth, as it now becomes your turn to maintain, add to, and build upon that long legacy and that very fine reputation that law enforcement has enjoyed throughout the ages. This great reputation is a result of those who served before you, People like some of your presenters, which are here tonight, and people like your cadre of instructors. Please note, all of your instructors are listed in your program. And further note, that they come from all walks of life and every avenue and aspect of law enforcement, and each and every one of them are experts and specialists in their own focused areas of expertise. And they're here for a few reasons. 
First, they're here because of the respect they have for law enforcement. They're here because they know that all, everything necessary to become a good police officer cannot be found online or in the textbook. They're here because they want to teach you and part on, give to you all that they have learned, accomplished, and experienced throughout their careers. And for that, let us one more time give them their well-earned recognition. Thank you, instructors. <laughs> Class, we have given you the pathway to your chosen field, your chosen profession, law enforcement. You are now a product of Lackawanna Co College's Police Academy, and you will always wear our label. Lackawanna College Police Academy is somewhat measured and graded by the performance and the success of our graduates. Going forward in life, you must position yourselves and posture yourselves so that we here at Lackawanna can always be as proud of you as we are today. Congratulations. May God bless you. May God bless and guide our United States of America. And may he watch over you throughout your entire career. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce the chain of command. I mentioned earlier that the chain of command is part of our organization. As I said, we are a paramilitary organization in how we operate and train. The chain of command is selected by the academy director with input from the instructors and staff. This is part of their training. To introduce them to the organizational structure of a police department. The chain of command is part of running our organization during academy training. We place special emphasis on the ability to communicate organizational discipline, and lead. And I can assure you that the chain of command had faced some very trying circumstances, and they have come through with flying colors. I commend you. Great job. The chain of command for class 244, Captain Carla Digg. Lieutenant An Lee. Sergeant Fizz and Sergeant Paul Dark. How about a round of applause for our chain of command? Thank you. Take your seats. So important to our cadets is that they understand they are part of a system. They are just one part of the system. And in this day and age, in the environment that we must operate in, it is important that they stick to our mission. Our mission is service before self. We are social servants. We are out there to help. They've been well trained and prepared for this. At this time, I will ask that the class captain, Captain Deke, please step forward. We will now hear from Captain Deke. Good evening, family, friends, law enforcement officers, distinguished guests, and most importantly, members of my graduating class. So here we are, class 244, finally made it to our graduation day. Felt like a long time. <laughs> so where do I even begin with all of this? Well, I can definitely tell you that I am not a speechwriter, but I will do my best to reflect on our journey together and help paint a picture for all of you. If you don't understand something I say, I can assure you 
My fellow cadets will. And I will say with full reverence that this speech is exactly about them and for them. So with that said, before we got to this point of graduation day, there are plenty of things to recall about class 244. I know that since you all weren't there, it won't be the same meaning as it is to us. So I will try not to bore you of anything that you don't understand or drag this speech out. But at the same time, and in all fairness, I need to show my gratitude and my heartfelt emotions for my fellow cadets. They are the real reason we are all here today, the reason I am here at this podium. When we all came together that very first day on July 16th, which to us was known as day zero, it was really something to take in for me. Being that I have a little more, well, I'll call it lifetime experiences, it was probably much different for me. Watching everyone in the room and noticing how nervous everyone was, the uncertainty of the days to come and the people around us was something I won't soon forget. We were all definitely a group of individual people who had one thing in common. That commonality was, as so eloquently phrased by Cadet Matthew Youngbear whenever he was asked, why are you here, Cadet, was simply, I just want to be a cop. At that time, the time ahead of us, those long 30 weeks, seemed like an eternity away. Believe me, some days were very long. But for most of us, over the following six and a half months, we would come together and we would become part of a lifetime family. Territory is getting bigger and bigger. This academy took a lot of time, sacrifice, and discipline, not only on the part of each cadet, but also family and loved ones who were there with us every step to see us through it. So thank you to each and every one of you for all you did and what you will continue to do for us. I also want to thank all of our instructors because without them, we wouldn't have got through this. They had patience with us, a lot of patience. <laughs> and they continued to sacrifice their time and efforts so that we could be prepared for what we were about to begin. They pushed us through rough times and kept us going, even when we had our doubts, but also gave us some good times to look back on and laugh about. I want to say a special thank you and show how much I appreciate the support I had from my lieutenant, Ann Lee, and my sergeant, Ryan Poldnerk. Being a leader isn't always easy, and some of the decisions I needed to make weren't always easy, but they were always in the best interest of the class. The two of them were always there supporting me and helping me stay grounded. I always like to say it's about leadership, not likership. Although you two didn't stop me from getting any more gray hair, I think you owe me a spa day. <laughs> I hope I was a great leader for all of you, that I made you feel empowered to go on to be great leaders yourselves. Just remember, you don't have to know it all to be a great leader. Be yourself. People would much rather follow a leader who was always real than one who was always right. I hope I was that for you, always for all of you. As a class, we've endured many challenges which would test each one of us in a different way. Some of these challenges were everything from the academic aspect to the physical challenges, the continuous financial challenges to the everyday differences of opinions with the many personalities of our class. Some of the challenges were from our class or the cadets ourselves. Challenges such as Cadet Hoffman, not being able to make it through a day without being in BDUs. I'm not sure how you survived, Hoffman. <laughs> he would come to me and say, so chief, BDUs tomorrow? And when my response would be, no Hoffman, no BDUs today, class A's, he would simply give me a respectful reply of, very good, and leave it at that. That became one of our everyday class phrases, very good. Then there was the challenges for our famous waiver, Cadet Williams, who is now actually Officer Williams of Bethlehem Township, 
to be able to make it through a class without bringing out his crinkling bag of pistachios at exactly the point that Captain Oliphant is undressing the entire class. Big no-no. <laughs> Technically, he was a waiver, so I think he must have missed the day talking about not eating in class. <laughs> then there was the ever-controversial challenge of the fierce competition at range day between Sobolski and Jimenez trying to obtain Top Gun title. Well, we all know what really happened with that, right, Jimenez? Mr. Whitecoat can back that up if there's any question. <laughs> I could go all night about the challenges, and I know you don't want me to. We've had, but I promise not to drag this out, so I will just mention a few other memorable moments. Cadet Gable's face at the moment he realized I was the chief in the Navy, being that he's a second class in the Navy. Classic. <laughs> we actually thought he saw a ghost. I guess your psychic abilities weren't working that day, Gable. <laughs> Mitch, the gazelle muir. You just had to let me, didn't you? <laughs> I guess that was my muir encounter. <laughs> but as we all can agree, none of that will compare to the challenges that we are about to face as we begin our new journey as police officers. The challenge to keep the community safe, keep ourselves safe, so may, we may return home to our families every day, all while being under the constant scrutiny of the public with every move we make being on camera. We have reached a new era where police officers not, are not automatically given the trust and respect they once were. So class 244, when you get out on the streets, just do what you've done for the last 30 weeks. Work hard. Do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Ask for help if you're not sure what to do. I think you all know by now if you pick up the phone anytime you are in need, I will be there to help you in any way I can without hesitation. Don't ever let your ego override your common sense and sensibility. Don't hesitate. Remember what we've been continuously been taught and that there's absolutely nothing wrong with a tactical retreat. Pay attention to your gut feelings and that tingling in the back of your neck. We were all a bunch of misfits, but in the end, we came together to make it through successfully. And I, your chief, Captain Chief, <laughs> would be honored to be in the land of misfits anywhere you are. All we can ever do is do what we believe in. And I certainly hope that none of you ever stop believing in yourselves and believing in what you are here and out there to do. I am never going to stop believing in you. We all made it through this academy with 100% success, with a better mindset, a better awareness of our surroundings, and a better understanding of how things work, whether it's on the streets or in our own backyard. Remember, never get complacent. Never let your guard down. And if at any time you're feeling any vulnerability set in, turn to the ones you love and who, who love you unconditionally to center you to what's important to you. Always remember. Be safe, be humble, and Godspeed to each and every one of you every day. Very well done. Thank you. We will now hear from our guest speaker this evening. Chief Albert Walker, longtime supporter of the Lackawanna College Police Academy, 30-year veteran of the Hanover Township Police Department, and has had the honor of being its chief for the last nine years. During his tenure in 2013, the department attained and continues to maintain accredited status from the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission, which is an incredible honor for any department. Very few departments in Northeast Pennsylvania hold that honor. Chief Walker is a proud graduate of the FBI National Academy Session 242. He graduated from the FBI National Academy in September 2010. Chief Walker is the current first vice president of the PA Chiefs of Police Association, 
a member of the PA Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission, past president of the Northeast PA Chiefs of Police Association, past vice president of the Luzerne County Chiefs of Police Association, and past member of the PA State 911 Board. Chief Walker currently sits on the board of the Luzerne County Coalition to Stop Overdoses, the Luzerne County Drug Court Steering Committee, and the Northeast Counseling Services. He's a very busy individual. We are honored to have him here as our guest speaker tonight. I introduce to you Chief Albert Walker. Thank you, Director Chileri. Good evening, family, friends, invited guests, academy faculty, staff, and graduating cadets of class 244, Hazleton. As the director mentioned, I am Chief Albert Walker to Hanover Township Police Department. And I've had the opportunity to attend a number of the graduation ceremonies over the past several years in my capacity as a representative of the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police Association. On those occasions, I was tasked with presenting the Safe Driving Award to a worthy cadet. And tonight, I again will have that honor in a very short while. However, additionally tonight, I have the distinct pleasure of speaking directly to you, the cadets of Class 244. Thank you for the honor to do so. Within my law enforcement career, I've, had, I've been a patrol officer, a detective, and for the last nine years, the chief of police. I have sought out and have been given many opportunities, which I am very grateful for. As I look back over my 30 years as a law enforcement officer, I recall fondly the day that I graduated from my Act 120 training. Like you, I'm sure, I was a little bit nervous and somewhat apprehensive of the unknown that lay ahead. But uh, what, what I recall most vividly was how proud I was that I was entering the noble profession of law enforcement, that I was now a part of something much bigger than myself, something much more important, and that I was at the beginning of my journey as a police officer. Your preparation for your journey began when you made the decision to attend this academy. Lackawanna College's Act 120 program is one of, if not the best in Pennsylvania, at preparing cadets at succeeding in the field of law enforcement. You have subjected yourselves to the rigors of this academy and have met and exceeded all of the necessary qualifications to be here tonight and to receive your certification to be a police officer. I congratulate you for that, and you should all be very proud you are prepared to begin your journey as a police officer. What your journey will look like in one year or five years or 30 years is entirely up to you. You will walk that journey one day at a time. What I would suggest to you is that when you go to work every day, first, you be mentally and physically prepared to do the job. Second, you start that shift and every shift with the attitude that you will provide the very best police services to the residents and to the public that you will interact with on that day. And last, but certainly not least, that when your shift is over, you go home alive, well and safe. If you do these three things, you will fulfill the goal of meeting your responsibility to be a guardian of our profession. We know that you are currently physically and mentally fit. You would not be sitting here if that were not the case. This academy has provided you a framework to follow throughout your career, to handle the physical and mental challenges that police officers have to confront on a daily basis. Please continue to work out, continue to eat right, and continue to rest your body and your mind so that you keep that edge on the job. Don't allow yourself to become distracted out on the street because bad things can happen very quickly. Also maintain and enhance your knowledge of the law. 
Ask to attend as much training as possible. And if your department won't send you, go on your own. As a chief of a police department that is accredited, I can tell you that to achieve and maintain accredited status, I and my officers must continually attend high quality training that provide, provides knowledge and skills on the latest and up-to-date law enforcement best practices and tactics. Because of this mandate, and because it is the right thing to do, I place a very high priority on sending my officers to as much training as possible. I know that a well-trained officer makes better decisions, and quite frankly, it makes my job as chief a lot easier. <coughs> After being physically and mentally prepared to do a great job, you need to have a good attitude. An attitude that, during the shift, you are going to make a positive difference in someone else's life that day. What I try to keep in mind during my daily journey is that, while I am one of thousands of police officers throughout the nation on duty at any given moment, I am the one officer that this person in front of me is dealing with at this time. Whether at the scene of an auto accident, or on a traffic stop, or during, during a domestic dispute, or just being approached by a person wishing to ask me a question while I walk down the street. At these times, and any other time we have interaction with another person, I try to remember, and I ask you to remember, that how we as police officers conduct ourselves and how we handle this situation before us is going to have an impact on this person and his or her perception of not only me, but of my department and of the larger police profession in general. That perception can be a positive one, or that perception could be a negative one, depending largely on how you conduct yourself. Now, does that mean that everyone that you arrest or have interaction with is going to like you? Of course not, but I challenge you to do this. If you handle yourself in a professional and ethical manner, follow well-written policies and procedures, and treat people with respect. More times than not, those same people that you have to arrest may end up thanking you. I know this may be hard to believe, but I have had many people approach me the next day, the next month, or sometimes years later, and thank me how, for how I treated them during a low point in their lives. Conducting ourselves appropriately, Doing, during all interactions with the public shows that we, as police officers, can hold people accountable for breaking the law and fulfill our mandate, but do it in such a way to maintain and increase the legitimacy of you and I, our department, and our profession. This is a tremendous responsibility that is on every one of our shoulders, yours and mine alike. We are the guardians of our profession, and we are the guardians of our Constitution. We must take very seriously the oath of office that we swear to prior to beginning our law enforcement career. When you hold up your right hand and swear an oath to support, obey, and defend the Constitution, and to uphold, obey, and enforce the laws, and discharge your duties without prejudice to anyone, you have made a solemn promise, a promise that thousands of men and women before you have made, a promise that some of our brothers and sisters lost their lives to keep. One of the many who lost their lives was Corporal David Whitmer of the Shemokin Police Department. I know that we will hear more of Corporal Whitmer shortly, but it is truly fitting that you, the 244th class Hazleton, chose Corporal Whitmer to honor by taking his name as your class name. Corporal Whitmer was a true American hero that lost his life protecting us. We remember him for not as he died, but as he lived, putting his uniform on and going to work every day and upholding the solemn promise that he made. You and I make that same promise. We can truly honor Corporal Whitmer and our other brothers and sisters who have made the ultimate sacrifice by doing our utmost to live up to that solemn promise each and every day. We have pledged to do no less. 
So please let me again congratulate you on reaching this point in your journey. Soon you will join our ranks and take up the task of guardian. May your journey be long and successful, and may God watch over you every step of the way. Thank you. The next time that I introduce Chief Walker, and, and he may not be aware of this, he's just added to his resume. <laughs> that was a great interview as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he will be an instructor. <laughs> You're gonna be invited, sir. We bring uh, our guest speakers in for a very specific reason. It is our final commitment to them to hear from some of the greatest individuals in the criminal justice system. Fine words, and I hope you take those to heart. Because it is so important in this day and age that we realize that the public is who we serve. And it's so important that you earn the public's respect every day, whether it is victim, witness, or suspect. Treating them with dignity, professionalism is essential. At this point in our presentation, in our, our program, we will be presenting awards to cadets for a variety of categories. The cadets do not know until this moment who the recipients are. The uh, first award for this evening is the Driver's Proficiency Award. This award is sponsored by the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police Association and will be presented by our guest speaker for the evening, Chief Al Walker. This award is presented to Cadet Young Bear. Please step forward. Well, this is the award that the captain had mentioned. There was quite a challenge for him. The Handgun Proficiency Award, sponsored by the Northeast Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police Association. I'll ask my friend, academy instructor, and the Blakely Chief of Police, Guy Salerno, to step forward to assist me. This award is presented to Cadet Yamez. The next award is the highest scholastic achievement award. This is the highest average of all courses, there are 27 examinations throughout the program. This award is presented in memory of our past director, Mary Ann Grippo. I'll ask the Academy Operations Coordinator, our retired Captain Will Oliphant, step forward, please. The highest scholastic achievement award is presented to Cadet An Lee. Another example of the collaborative effort between our academy and local law enforcement is the Trooper Joshua D. Miller Physical Fitness Award. The recipient is chosen based on the combined scores of the 1.5 mile and the 300 meter run through the initial, midpoint, and final testing in physical training. The cadets undergo a series of testing 
and most of the physical training is put on them. Our instructors, who often hide themselves in the back, again, they don't like to be front and center, do a tremendous job of preparing and testing these individuals. Just like the handgun award, there will be a plaque hanging in the academy with the names of each recipient engraved. So future cadets can be inspired, inspired to follow in the recipient's footsteps. Tonight's award will be presented by Assistant Academy Director, Retired Chief uh, Bob Jolly. The recipient of this award is Cadet Captain Carla Day. Each graduation class selects one member to receive the Spirit of Distinction Award. The award is named for one of our graduates, Eric Williams. For those of you who do not know, Eric Williams was working as a correction officer at the U.S. Penitentiary in Canaan when he was brutally attacked and stabbed to death by an inmate. Officer Williams was killed on February 25th 2013. He had served with the Federal Bureau of Prisons for 18 months. He was survived by his parents, sisters, and two brothers. Eric's family has dedicated themselves to improving the safety for correctional officers and all of law enforcement. They are near and dear friends and supporters of our academy and our efforts to help train law enforcement officers to be the best they can, and to do their job professionally and safely. They have taken their words to the Capitol Hill, and they have generously given the Academy an annual donation from the Foundation in Eric's name to support our outreach program through our Family Day for our cadet families. In the spirit of selflessness, we have named the award for Eric. The award is given to the cadet in each Hazleton class who the cadet believes embodies those same special qualities of honor, dedication, service, courage, and selflessness that Eric exhibited. Again, Assistant Director Robert Jolly will assist me on stage with presenting this award. The recipient for this award for Class 244 is Captain Carla Day. The business of law enforcement has changed over the years. Each night when I leave the academy, my hope is, is that we have done our job, that we have prepared the cadets, the future law enforcement leaders, to go out, serve, and protect. To be the professionals that set the example no matter what call or situation they face. It is not an option. Your integrity is not an option. The public demands more from you all the time. And that's the profession you chose. It's honorable. It is something that will change your life and will change the life of others. At this time, we will be 
starting the presentation of certificates. I now will ask Scranton Police Department Detective Sergeant Mike Fiesco and Patrolman Tony Gita to join us on stage. They are members of the Board of Directors of the Never Forgotten Ride. This is a new addition to our academy. It's a partnership we formed with the Never Forgotten Ride. This organization's mission is dedicated to the welfare of our officers and all of first responders and keeping the memory of our fallen first responders alive. I became director in February of 2018 and I was approached by their organization and they said they wanted to do more to help prepare the future first responders. They are donating a $100 gift certificate to each graduating class member for the purchase of essential police equipment that these officers will need to begin their careers. Because oftentimes, you don't, you don't receive all the equipment you need to carry out this job. We cannot thank them enough. During the presentation of their certificates, cadets are given the option to have someone in law enforcement to help present their certificate. Some have chosen a person to join them on stage and as they receive their certificate. At this time, I will ask uh, any of those who are presenting certificates to please join our cadets over at that door and they will guide you to where you will uh, uh, be presenting from. Assisting me with the pre presentation of the certificates will be my Academy Operations Coordinator, retired Captain Will Oliphant, and my Assistant Director, who has worked very closely with Class 244 as he is primarily down in the Hazleton Training Center. I will ask them to join me on stage as we present the certificates. Cadet Matthew Jungbear, presented by his father, Peter Jungbear, retired Fort Indian Town Gap PD. Cadet Greg Hoffman, Jr., presented by his daughter, Trinity Hoffman. <clears throat> Cadet Greg Johnson, Jr., presented by father, Greg Johnson, Sr., Patrolman, Luzerne Borough, PD. <clears throat> Cadet Ryan Poldirk.
Cadet Jason Woodward, presented by his sister, Alicia Woodward, Norwich PD. Cadet Christine Trauger, presented by her brother Christian Trauger, Shippensburg University PD. <laughs> Cadet Captain Carla Digg, presented by PA House member Tina Pickett. 110th District. <clears throat> Cadet Sergeant Lauren Fizz, presented by her husband, Chan Ma Chad Medieka, veteran, United States Marine Corps. Cadet, Cadet Lieutenant Ahn Lee, presented by Officer Seth Williams, Bethlehem Township PD. <clears throat> Cadet Patrick McDonald, presented by Chief Michael Combs, Chief of Mil Minersville PD. Cadet Vladimir Bonilla, presented by his wife, Alexis Bonilla. <clears throat> Cadet Mitchell Muir, presented by Robert Reinheimer, retired PSP, currently Sergeant uh, Cunningham Borough. <clears throat> Cadet Cody Searfoss, presented by Chief Michael Combs, Chief of Minersville PD. Cadet Seth Gable. No. I didn't have that down. Cadet Isaac. Jimenez, presented by his father, Antonio Jimenez. <clears throat> Cadet Kyle Sobolski, presented by his brother, Patrolman Thomas Sobolski, Salisbury Township PD. How about another round of applause for class 244 and their presenters?
We have many traditions at our academy, and one of the very important traditions is to recognize fallen officers who have gone before us, those who have made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of others. For any man or woman to enter this profession, understanding that they are here to serve. We honor all fallen officers. Each class is instructed to choose a fallen officer to whom they dedicate their training for the, and graduation. This tradition underscores for the cadets the serious nature of the job and how important it is to perform their duties with honor not only for themselves and those they serve, but in order to do justice to the men, women, and canines who lay down their lives in this profession. Each class upon graduation then becomes forever known and referred to as the name of that fallen officer. Class 244 has chosen Corporal David W. Whitmere of the Shamokin City Police Department. His end of watch, November 13, 1983. Corporal David Whitmere was shot and killed when he answered a mutual aid call from the township, neighboring township police chief. The shooter went into a jealous rage when his ex-girlfriend received an obscene phone call. He set fire to what he believed was his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend's auto, auto body garage located in the small anthracite coal region town of Trevor Town, PA. The suspect then went stalking through the neighborhood from house to house. Holding up in the shadows, he fired a volley of shots that lasted approximately 20 minutes. Corporal Whitmer died almost instantly after being struck in the neck by a rifle shot. Another officer was wounded, and fortunately he survived. After killing Corporal Whitmer, the suspect tried to flee the scene in his tractor trailer. He was apprehended by officers from Shemokin City Police Department, Cole Township Police Department, and the Pennsylvania State Police. The subject was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He died in prison on October 12, 2013. Corporal Whitmer was a United States military veteran and had served with the Shemokin City Police Department for nine years. He was survived by his wife, daughter, and three grandsons. Lackawanna College Police Academy will forever remember Corporal David William Whitmer, Class 244, will now recognize as Class Corporal David Whit William Whitmer. The graduation ceremony is dedicated to him and his dedication to service and, and, and sacrifice. And of course, following our motto of mission before self. Here with us tonight is Detective Hassel from the Cole Township Police Department, a neighboring community. He will be accepting this plaque on behalf of the City of Shemokin Police Department. The plaque was prepared to honor fallen officer Whitmere. It displays our academy patch, inscribed in the names of each member of our class, 244. Please join us, Detective Hosmer. Please join me on stage to accept this plaque. Chief Jolly. Sergeant, we thank you very much for being with us here tonight to accept that plaque. 
Class 244 will always be remembered by his department, family, friends, and the fallen officers, brothers, and sisters. Captain Brown of the Scranton Class 245 has joined us on stage next to the Academy flag that stands in each cap campus. During this part of our ceremony, the outgoing class captain presented the banner that bears Corporal Whitmer's name and his department patch and class number. The outgoing captain tied the banner on the Police Academy guide on that stands at the Academy entrance. The streamer that adorns the Corporal's name will forever be part of our Academy. Another tradition of the Lackawanna College Police Academy is the presentation to each cadet of a challenge coin depicting the Academy logo and our mission statement of honor, integrity, courage, and includes the department patch in the name of the fallen officer. Appearing on the screen behind you is the challenge coin that each cadet has received in the graduation packet. The, in closing, I would like to thank everyone who's come here to support your cadet. And I offer to all the cadets the following words that I've said to the classes that came before you. This is the start. This is the beginning. Your home at Lackawanna College is here for you. My staff, the cadre of instructors stand ready at any time and all the time to assist you any way we can. You join a legacy of officers that over the last 42 years of this police academy have graduated and moved on to incredible careers in law enforcement. Quite a while ago I graduated from this academy and I had this vision that I'd have a successful career in law enforcement. I never look back with any regret. I've worked with some of the most incredible people. I've had an opportunity to work alongside some of the most incredible law enforcement officers, judges, attorneys, assistant uh, uh, district attorneys. And a special thank you to Lackawanna County District Attorney Mark Powell for joining us tonight. We've set on a path 
along with many other agencies, to join forces to produce the very best. And the reward is the best service that we could provide. You've made this commitment to stand the gap between us and those who seek to do us and our fellow citizens harm. You have my respect, and I would be honored to serve alongside any one of you. You have proven yourself, and as you go forward, I wish you safe travels. And remember, Lackawanna College Police Academy is here to serve you. You always have a home at the Academy. Be safe. Congratulations, job well done. Drill Instructor Hughes, for the final time, please take command of Class 244. Hey, Mr. Powell, how are you doing? Nice, nice to meet you. 